I want to make this very clear. If you have been experiencing symptoms that may or may not be Kundalini awakening, and you've also been experiencing symptoms that may be psychosis or maybe have been described or diagnosed as bipolar or whatever other particular framing within the mental illness spectrum. Be aware that both of these things can be true simultaneously. Both of them. And that was what happened for me. It wasn't as if I wasn't psych that I didn't experience psychosis. I did. I absolutely <clears throat> experienced psychosis. However, I also knew that what was unfolding was within a spiritual context, which then gave me a spiritual framework to apply so I could then do the very difficult and hard work of repairing and healing the way that the mind was functioning so that the mind no longer went into psychosis, right? So just because that, yeah, there may be Kundalini awakening happening, it doesn't mean that you can use that as a way to avoid acknowledging and doing the difficult work around mental health. And this is something I'm starting to see is happening with the videos I've made, the articles I've written, because people reach out to me. They send me emails, they book sessions with me. And I can see that people are finding solace or reassurance in my videos from the perspective of, oh no, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not mentally ill. Look, I'm actually having Kundalini awakening. And I'm like, no, it's both. It's both happening simultaneously. And if you only apply the Western medical model, which has a more narrow um, view, you could say, then you're not taking advantage of or perceiving it through the more spiritual lens, which has a wider view, which is what I did. I was like, this is not simply, this is not just, this is not only mental illness, right? This is also and an invitation to walk this path with absolute dedication and persistence. And one of the reasons why I was so dedicated to the path was because I realized that if I do not do this, the mind may go into psychosis again. And I was like, there is no way I'm allowing that to happen. I'm not going into a psychosis again. Because I recognized, right, and the literature, you know, if you study the literature, this is what it, it says, is that um, the more times that a mind goes into psychosis, the more likely it is that it'll go into psychosis again. Because of course you're, you're wearing down uh, ruts as such, you're wearing a common path. Um, you would call this like a samskara within the yogic framework. So I was like, okay, this has happened. And tantra, yoga, gives me a way to perceive it and a way to work with it that is broader, more holistic, more useful than the mental health model. Um, remembering that within the spiritual context, I recognize that I am not my mind. I am not my thoughts. I am not this illness. That is not what I am. However, I was not denying that that was what was happening and that was how the mind was functioning at that time. And since then, the mind has gone through all different kinds of things, from anxiety to depression to PTSD to, what else? Those are probably the main ones. Um, never, never psychosis again since 2004. Um, and every time these things are happening, I'm working with them skillfully using the teachings of yoga and tantra, right? Tantra has a lot to say about how to skillfully work with the mental, emotional body. And the energetic body right and I was also using the best of the tools of the psychology right different pieces from IFS for example can be really beneficial and so I have dedicated the last 20 years and it literally it was 20 years ago that I ended up in the psych ward the first time last week right I dedicated the last 20 years to healing and recovery so I just wanted to make this really clear if you're experiencing any kind of mental health symptoms, right, and also kundalini awakening, recognize it is not an either or, it is a both and. You need to attend to 
both of these things. You need to figure out what's your commitment on the spiritual path. What are you actually wanting to do on the spiritual path? So many people are just fucking around on the spiritual path. They have no idea what they're doing, right? And um, they don't know what they're actually aiming for. They don't know. They don't have teachings. They don't. They don't do practice. You know, and it's become this identity, this this costume that people wear because it's more comforting and, and more reassuring than the costume they used to wear, which maybe was a lawyer or something or whatever, right? Um, so when this stuff goes on, get clear. What are you doing? What is this about? And use the very best resources that you've got to deal with the way your mind is functioning, the way the mind and body is functioning, right? A lot of psychotherapy is catching up to the approach that yoga and tantra takes to healing right somatic therapy can be really beneficial you know like if i had had more financial resources and trusted <laughs> trusted therapists more then i could have taken advantage and gone and done some really good therapy and maybe it would not have taken me as long as it did right um, because of the particular patterning and conditioning that i had i relied a lot on self-sufficiency which can be a gift and can be a weakness, right? So you need to be so honest with yourself about whatever you are experiencing. Honesty with self is a critical piece of the path. So be aware if you've got all kinds of weird things going on, they're freaking you out, you don't want to feel the way you feel, your life is falling apart, you just want to, you want to be reassured, you want to know that you're normal and all of that kind of thing, right, which is what humans do, and you're desperately on Google searching for information, etc. Don't use what you find as a way to stay asleep. Don't use what you find as a way to continue to avoid doing the hard, challenging work of mental health recovery, right? Psychosis is ultimately, my own theory, my, from my own direct experience, psychosis is a way of the mind preventing someone from feeling really intense feelings. It's an avoidance technique, right? And so for me, I knew that, oh my God, I need to stop avoiding I need to start being with what is from moment to moment my direct sensory experience. And so what I see is a lot of people using the Kundalini, Kundalini information, etc. to continue to avoid what is true in the moment. So, <sighs> blessings on your path, blessings on your path. May you find the teachings and the practices and the teacher that you require. And blessings to the goddess. May she lead us all home. Mm.